friends, live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, day four of our coverage of AWS reInvent continues. Lisa Martin here with Dave Vellante. You can tell it's day four. Yeah, <laughs> you can tell it's you day four. You get punchy? Did you, yes. <laughs> Did you know that the Vegas rodeo is coming into town? I'm kind of bummed I'm leaving tonight. Really, you a rodeo this fan? Weekend? No. <laughs> but to see a bunch of cowboys in Vegas, I'd like to see the Raiders. I'd like to see the Raiders in Vegas. There you go, yeah. yeah. Get tickets. Yeah, and the hockey team. Yeah. We have had an amazing event, Dave. The Cube's 10th year covering reInvent, 11th reInvent. Our 10th year here, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I mean, we covered remotely in, during COVID, but yes, yeah. Yes, yes. Awesome content. Anything jump out at you that we really, we, we love talking to AWS, the ecosystem. We got a customer next. Anything jump out at you that's really a kind of a key I mean, takeaway? The big story is the maturity of AWS. You know, I mean, people ask me what's different under a Adam than under Andy, and I'm like, really, it's the maturity of AWS is what's different. You know, ecosystem, connecting the dots, moving towards solutions. You know, that's that's the big thing, and it's, you know, in a way, it's kind of boring relative to other reinvents, which are like, oh wow, oh my God, they announced Outpost. So you don't see anything like that. It's more taking the platform to the next level, which is a good thing. The next level, it is a good thing. Speaking of next level, we have a couple of next level guests from T-Mobile joining us. We're going to be talking through their customer story, their business transformation with AWS. Glenn Kersingle joins us, the Director of Product and Technology, and Nick Chris, Senior Manager of Product and Technology. Guys, welcome, great to have you. You're on brand, you're on T-Mobile brand, I love it. Yes, yeah, I mean, we are always T-Mobile. I know, love so. it. So everyone knows T-Mobile, Glenn. You guys are in the digital commerce domain. Talk to us about what that is, what functions that delivers for T-Mobile. Yeah, so the digital commerce uh, domain operates and runs a platform called the digital commerce platform. What this essentially does, it's a set of APIs that are headless that power the shopping experiences. When you talk about shopping experiences at T-Mobile, a customer comes to either a T-Mobile website or goes to a store, and what they do is they start with the discovery process of a phone, they take it through the process, they decide to purchase the phone, they add, add the phone to cart, and then eventually they decide to you know, basically pull the trigger and, and buy the phone, it, at which point they submit the order. So that whole experience, essentially from start to finish, is powered by the digital commerce platform. Just this year, we have processed well over three and a half million orders amounting to a billion and a half dollars worth of business for T-Mobile. Wow, big outcomes. Nick, talk about the before stage. Obviously the, the customer experience is absolutely critical because if, if it goes awry, people churn. We know that, and nobody wants, you know, brand reputation is at stake. Yep. Talk about some of the challenges before uh, that you guys faced, and how did you work with AWS and part, its partner ecosystem to address those challenges? Sure. Yeah, so um, actually before uh, I started working with Glenn on the commerce domain, I was part of T-Mobile's uh, cloud team. So we were the team that kind of brought in AWS. And uh, commerce platform was really the first tier one system to go 100% cloud native. And so for us, it was uh, very much a uh, learning experience and a journey uh, to learn how to operate on the cloud, and which was fundamentally different from how we were doing things in the old on-prem days. When you talk about headless APIs, you talk, I don't know if you saw Warren of Ogle's keynote this morning, but you're talking about loosely coupled, a loosely coupled system that you can evolve without ripping out the whole system or without bringing the whole system down. Can you explain that in a little bit more detail? Absolutely. So the concept of headless API exactly opens up that possibility. What it allows us to do is to build and operate a platform that runs sort of loosely coupled from the user experiences. So when you think about this uh, from a simplistic standpoint, you have a set of APIs that are headless, and you've got the website that connects to it, the retail store applications that connect to it, as well as the customer care applications that connect to it. And essentially what that does is it allows us to basically operate all these platforms without being sort of tightly coupled to each other. Yeah, well he was talking about this morning when, when AWS announced S3, you know, there was just a handful of services, maybe just two or three, I think now there's 200. And you know, it's never gone down, it's never been you know, replaced, yep. essentially. And so, you know, the whole thing was it's an asynchronous system that's loosely coupled, and then you create that illusion of synchronicity uh, for the customer. Exactly. Which, is, which was, I thought, you know, really well described. But maybe you, you guys could talk about what the genesis was for this system, and take us kind of to the, from the before or after, you know, the classic as, as was and, the, and as is. Talk about that? Yeah, I can start and then hand sure. it off to Nick uh, yeah. for some more details. 
So we started this journey back in 2016. And uh, at that point, T-Mobile had eight, seven or eight different commerce platforms. Obviously, you can think about the complexity involved in running and operating platforms. It, it, we've all talked about T-Mobile being the uncarrier. It's a brand that we have uh, basically popularized in the telco industry. Uh, we would come out with these massive uncarrier moves, and uh, every time that announcement was made, teams had to scramble because you've got seven systems, seven teams, every single system needs to be updated, right? So that's where we started when we kicked off this transformational journey. Uh, over time, essentially, we have brought it down to one platform that supports all these experiences, and what that allows us to do is not only uh, time to market gets reduced immensely, but it also allows us to basically reduce our operational cost, because we don't have to have teams running seven, eight systems, it's just one system with one team that can focus on making it a world-class you know, platform. Yeah. I think one of the strategies that definitely paid off for us, because going all the way back to the beginning, our little platform was powering just a tiny little corner of the, of the web space, right? But even in those days, we approached it from, we're going to build functions in a way that is sort of agnostic to what the experience is going to be. So over time, as we would build a capability that one particular channel needed, uh, primary, we were still thinking about all the other channels that needed it. So now over a few years, <clears throat> that investment pays off and you have basically the same capabilities working in the same way across all the channels. When did the journey start? 2016. 2016, yeah. It's, yeah. Been, uh, it's been six years. What are some of the game changers in, in this business transformation that you would say, these yeah. are some of the things that really ignited our transformation? Yeah, there's particularly one thing that we feel pretty proud about, which is, uh, the fact that we now operate uh, what we call active-active stacks. And what that means is you've got a single stack of the commerce platform start to finish that can run in an independent manner, but we can also start adding additional stacks that are basically loosely coupled from each other but can, but can run to support the business. What that basically enables is it allows us to run in active-active mode, which itself is a big deal, uh, from a system uptime perspective, it really changes the game. It allows us to uh, push releases without worrying about any kind of downtime. Uh, we've done canary releases, we are in the middle of retail season and we can in introduce changes without worrying about it. And more importantly, I think what it has also allowed us to do is essentially practice disaster recovery while doing a release, because that's exactly what we do is every time we do a release, we are switching between these uh, separate stacks and essentially our practicing our DR strategy. So you do this, it's, it's, you, you separate across regions, I presume. Yes. Is that right? Yes. This was a really interesting conversation because as you well know, in the on-prem world, you never tested that disaster recovery. It was too risky. Yeah. Because you, you, yep. you're afraid you're going to take your whole business down. And you're essentially saying that the testing is fundamental to the implementation. Absolutely. It is, it is the thing that you do for every release. So you know, at least every week or so, you are doing this. And you know, in the old world, the active-passive world, on paper you had a bunch of capabilities and in, in incidents that are even less than, say, a full disaster recovery scenario, you would end up making the choice not to use that capability because there was too much complexity or risk or problem. When we put this in place now, I, I tell people everything we do got easier after that. Is it a challenge for you, or how do you deal with the challenge, correct me if it's not a challenge, that sometimes Amazon services are not available in both regions. I think, for instance, the observability thing that they just announced this week, is it's not cross-region, or maybe I'm getting that wrong, but there are services where you, know, you might not be able to do data sharing across regions. How do you manage that, or maybe there's different you know, levels of certifications. How do you manage that discontinuity, or is that not an issue for you? Yeah, I mean, it is certainly a concern. And, and so the stacks, like Glenn said, they are largely decoupled, and that, what that means is practically every component, and there's a lot of, lot of components in there, uh, I have uh, redundancy from an availability zone point of view. But then where the real magic happens is when you come in as a user to uh, the stack, we're going to initially kind of lock you on one stack. And then the key thing that we do is uh, we, we understand the difference between wh what we would call the critical data, so think of like your shopping cart, and then contextual data that we can relatively easily reload if we need to. And so that critical data is constantly in an async fashion, so it's not interrupting your performance, uh, being broadcast out to a place uh, where we can recover it if we need to, if we need to send you to another stack. And then we call that 
uh, dehydration. And if you end up getting bumped to a new stack, we rehydrate you on that stack and reload that, that uh, contextual data. So to make that whole thing happen, uh, we rely on something we call the global cart store, and that's basically powered by Dynamo. So Dynamo is highly, highly reliable and multi-region. So, and, and I presume you're doing some form of serverless, maybe for the stateless stuff, and, and maybe taking control of the runtime for the stateful things. Are you, are you leaning into to serverless and Lambda, or not yet, because you want control over the... The, the, the EC2 and the memory configs, what, what's, I mean, I know we're going inside the plumbing a little bit, but it's kind of fun. <laughs> That's always fun, <laughs> you went. Yeah, and, and it has been a journey. Uh, back in 2016 when we started, we were all on EC2s. And across, you know, over the last uh, three or four years, we have kind of uh, gone through that journey where we went from EC2 to, uh, to uh, uh, containers. Uh, and we are, at some point, we'll get to where we will be serverless. We've got a few functions running, but uh, you know, in that journey, I think when you look at the full end of the spectrum, we are somewhere towards the, the process of sort of going from uh, uh, you know, containers to, to serverless. Yeah, so today your team is setting up the containers, they're fencing them off, fencing off the app, and doing all that sort of, sort of semi-heavy lifting. Yep. Um, how do you deal with the, you know, this is one of the things Lisa, you and I were talking about is the skill sets. We always right. talk about this. What's that, what's your team look like and what are the skill sets that you've got that you're deploying? Yeah, I mean, as you can imagine, it's a challenge and it's a highly specialized uh, skill set that you need and we talk about cloud. You know, I, I tell developers when we uh, bring new folks in, in the old days you could just be like really good at Java and study that for, and be good at that for decades. But in the cloud world you have to be uh, wide in, in your breadth. And so you have to understand those 200 services, right? And so uh, one of the things that really has helped us is we've had a partner, um, so UST Global is a uh, digital services uh, company. And they've really kind of been on the journey of the, the same timeline that we were. And I had worked with them uh, on the cloud team you know, before I came to Commerce. And when I came to the, to the Commerce team, we were really struggling, especially from that operational perspective. Um, the, the team was just not adapting to that uh, new cloud reality. They were used to the on-prem world. But we brought these folks in because not only were they really able to understand this stuff, but they had built a lot of the platforms that we were going to be leveraging for Commerce uh, with us on the cloud team. So for example, uh, we have built, uh, T-Mobile operates our own uh, customized Kubernetes platform. Uh, we've done some stuff uh, for serverless development, uh, CI, CD, cloud security. And so not only did these folks have the right skill sets, but they knew how we were approaching it from a T-Mobile cloud perspective. And so it's kind of, kind of fun to see, you know, when they came uh, on board with this journey with us, we were uh, both both companies were relatively new and, and learning. Now I look and you know I, I think that they're like a, a platinum sponsor these days here of AWS, and so uh, it's kind of cool to see how we've all grown together. A lot of evolution, a lot of maturation. Glenn, I want to know from you, and we're almost out of time here, but tell me the, what the digital commerce domain, you kind of talked about this in the beginning, but I want to know, what's the value in it for me as a customer? All of this under the hood, plumbing, yeah. the maturation, the transformation, how does it benefit me? Great question. So as a customer, uh, all they care about is coming into, uh, going to the website, walking into a store, and without spending too much time, complete their transaction and walk out. They don't care about what's under the hood, right? So this transformational journey from, you know, like I talked about, we started with EC2s back in the day. It was uh, what we call the Wild West in the, uh, on a cloud native platform to where we have reached today, you know, the journey we have collectively uh, traversed with uh, USD has allowed us to basically build a system that allows a customer to walk into a store and not spend a whole hour dealing with uh, a sales rep that's trying to sell them things. They can walk in and out quickly. They go to the website, literally within a couple minutes they can complete the transaction and leave. That's what customers want. It is. And that has really sort of helped us, uh, when you think about T-Mobile, and the fact that uh, we are now poised to be a, a leader uh, in the US in telco, it, this whole concept of systems that really empower the customers to quickly complete their transaction has been one of the key components of allowing us to kind of make that growth. 
right? So. Right, and a big driver of revenue. Exactly. I have one final question for each of you. We're making a Instagram reel, so think about if you had 30 seconds to describe T-Mobile as a technology company that sells phones or a technology company that delights people, what, what would you say if you had a billboard? What would it say about that? Glenn, what do you think? So T-Mobile, uh, from a uh, technology company perspective, the, the whole purpose of uh, setting up uh, T-Mobile's uh, you know, shopping experience is about bringing customers in, uh, surprising and delighting them with uh, frictionless shopping experiences that basically allow them to come in and complete the transaction and move on with their lives. It's not about keeping them in the store for too long uh, when they don't want to do it, and uh, essentially the idea is to just basically surprise and delight our customers. Perfect. Nick, what would you say, what's your billboard about T-Mobile as a technology company that's delivering great services to its customers? Yeah, I think, you know, Glenn really covered it well. What I would just add to that is, I think the way that we are approaching it these days, really starting from that 2016 period is, we like to say, we don't think of ourselves as a telco company anymore. Uh, we think of ourselves as a technology company that happens to do telco among other things, right? And so we've approached this from a point of view of we're here to uh, uh, provide the best possible experience we can to our customers and we take it personally when, uh, when we don't reach that high bar. And so uh, what we've done in the last few years as a transformation has really given us the toolbox that we need to be able to kind of meet that promise. Awesome, guys it's been a pleasure having you on the program talking about the transformation of T-Mobile. Great to hear what you're doing with AWS, the maturation, and we look forward to having you back on to see what's next. Thank you Thanks so guys. much. Thanks guys, awesome, thank you. thank you so much. All right, for our guests and Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live enterprise and emerging tech coverage.